everyone. It is a wonderful pleasure to have you joining me. Uh, it is time for Actual English, of course, with me, Jennifer Clyde. It's a brand new program for all of you out there, for new viewers and, of course, old viewers as well. Um, I have hosted a very similar program targeted for all of you that are interested in improving your English speaking skills. So I'm sure that many of you are actually viewing this program that have viewed the actual speaking program with me. But to all of our new viewers, welcome to the lessons. Uh, we've got many, many different topics and I'll be joining you each day of the week. Uh, we're going to tie up very similar or related topics each and every week. So I hope you can have fun with me. The whole idea of, I guess, learning a foreign language, especially uh, improving your speaking skills, it all has to do with having fun. So everyone, do not be pressured. Don't get stressed out because you don't remember things and you think English is difficult. Just uh, relax, be at ease, and have fun with me. Okay, to tell you a bit about our program, as I did tell you, I'll be joining you every day of the week. Uh, our program consists of two big segments. I'll be joining you with actual talk to begin with, and then we'll share actual story. Very similar to an interview that you can listen to and learn many, many wonderful expressions. Okay? All right, I'll be giving you more details on our program later on. So first of all, our topic for the day is self-introduction. Now, when you meet somebody for the first time, it can be at a workplace. It can be at a party, for example, like a social gathering. So, we're going to start off by practicing or learning expressions that you can use to introduce yourself at a workplace, perhaps a new company or at a new job. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Let's begin with today's actual talk. Hey, Peter. Hey, Rachel. How are you? I'm good, but I'm a bit nervous. <gasps> Why? Because I'm starting at a new company in a couple days, mm -hmm. but I don't really know how to introduce myself to a new group of people. I guess, yeah. The first day at a company is nerve-wracking. Yeah. Right? You meet so many new faces, and they all know each other as well. That's exactly. even worse. But there are some things that I could uh, say you should do on your first I'd day. I'd love some advice. Okay. A firm handshake. That's okay. key to project confidence, but not too hard. You don't want to hurt the other person, <laughs> but not too flimsy as well. I hate a wet, flimsy handshake. So if you're feeling nervous and sweaty, perhaps give your hand a wipe as well. Oh, beforehand. like a handkerchief in my pocket yeah, or something. Yeah, absolutely. That's if you don't have that, idea. just on the back of your skirt or trousers. Or yeah, thing. no, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, because when it's a sweaty hand that you come to, it's like, clammy I, hands. they're going to call you clammy hands <laughs> that's at the company. True. <laughs> All right, so a firm handshake is really important. Yeah, and then eye contact as well. All of these things is to project your uh, confidence, right? Right. Uh, eye contact and a big smile. I think that always helps. It makes people feel much more comfortable if you're happy as well. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That definitely will leave a great first impression, your smile. Yeah, right? yeah. Yes. As long as you don't have something stuck in your teeth. Oh, no. I'll again, have to, check. <laughs> I will. I'll have to get a mirror and check my teeth. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. So you're saying a firm handshake is important, good eye contact. Mm -hmm. Those show that I'm confident, right? Yeah. And then a friendly smile will show that um, I'm at ease and I'm comfortable with my surroundings. Sure. Right? And then maybe the last thing, remember people's names. Oh, you're and when right. you say your name as well, project it loudly so they remember you. That's true. But you know, there's so many people that I have to meet that, how do I remember all their names? I think writing it down as soon as you can, the earliest okay. possible opportunity. Um, but I think that's about it. And I think you'll be fine, Rachel. You think so? Yes. All right. Well, I can't wait to use that advice on my first day at my new company. Fingers crossed. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Did you enjoy today's actual talk? Of course, the dialogue between Rachel and Peter. Now, what were they talking about? The two were talking about introducing themselves at a workplace, right? Rachel mentioned that she is planning on starting work at a new company, and Peter gave her some great advice. So let's take a look at the dialogue line by line. Here's today's actual talk. Now, of course, in the beginning, they casually say hello, and uh, Rachel says, I'm doing good. I'm good, but I'm a 
bit nervous. Bit meaning I am a little nervous. Now, why so? She explains because I'm starting at a new company in a couple of days. Now, let's take a look at this part. To start at one place. Of course, start means to begin something. In this case, we're talking about starting work at a new company, okay? And then she says, but I don't really know how to introduce myself to a new group of people. Meaning, a new group of people, people that she does not know well, okay? So, new people that she'll be meeting at the new workplace. Moving on. Now, Peter says the first day at a company is nerve-wracking, right? And then he says you meet so many new faces. So, first of all, he's talking about the first day at work. It could be nerve-wracking. Now, let's first of all find out what nerve-wracking means. So, here we go. Now, nerve. We have nerve flowing in our body, but when you say nerve-wracking, you're saying that something is very stressful, okay? Something can war you and something can stress you out. So, in that case, you can say something is nerve-wracking. All right. And also, let's take a look at another one. Remember, there was new face. I think even in Korea, a lot of Koreans say, oh, new face, new face. What does that mean? That's right. Somebody that you don't know that you are meeting for the first time. So, a new face actually means people that you meet for the first time. Okay? So, keep those in mind. Let's move back to the dialogue. Okay. And then he says, you meet so many new faces, meaning new people, and they all know each other as well. And he says, that is even worse because everyone else, they all know each other, but you don't. Okay. Moving on. He says, but there are some things you should do on your first day. And then he moves on by giving her some great advice. Okay, first of all, he says, a firm handshake, that is key to project confidence. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Okay, basically, even if you don't know the definitions of these words, a firm handshake, of course, we say hello by shaking hands, a handshake, and also key. We're not talking about a key that we use to open a door. And here it's not project, it's actually to project. So let's take a look at what these words mean. First of all, a firm handshake, let's take a look. So a firm, when you say firm, it means a very strong, not weak, not soft. So he says, a firm handshake is important. It means when you shake somebody's hand, uh, don't hold their hand too softly, okay? Make sure it's solid and firm. And another one we took a look at was key, okay? Something is key in this case means that something is important. It's crucial, okay? It is vital. So keep those definitions in mind. And there was one more, to project, okay? In this case, the stress goes in the second syllable. As you can see, it's not project. When it's a verb, it should be project. Project. One more time, project. So you should project confidence, meaning you should show confidence to others. Basically means to give or express a clear impression of what you are trying to say, perhaps your thoughts or even your feelings, okay? Okay, and then uh, let's move on. Moving on, he says, but not too hard because he's talking about a very strong, a firm handshake. You don't want to hurt the other person. He's just joking. He says, but not too flimsy as well. Okay, now what is flimsy? Let's take a look. Okay, flimsy basically is an adjective, and as you see, the pronunciation is flimsy. Flimsy. It's not pronounced with an S sound, but it's closer to a Z, Z sound. Flimsy. Flimsy, okay? Now, flimsy means the very opposite of firm. So, it means very weak, okay? So, basically, flimsy, once again, weak, without strength, often also used as unstable. So, let's go back to the dialogue. All right, I hate a wet, flimsy handshake. A wet meaning very, very moist, flimsy handshake. So, if you are feeling nervous and sweaty, perhaps give your hand a wipe as well. 
So basically, he is saying that when you shake somebody's hand once again, don't shake their hand too softly, but give them a firm handshake. And now they're talking about a very wet, a very moist, a very sweaty handshake. Let's move on and see what else they say. Now Rachel says, "Oh, so if you have a sweaty, oh, if you have sweaty hands, maybe you need a handkerchief, right? Handkerchief, son sugon in Korean." And then he jokes and says. If you don't have that, just go to the back of your skirt or trousers. Now here, the word is the verb go. In this case, Peter is not saying actually go to one's skirt or trousers. He's saying, well, wipe your hands on your skirt or your trousers. Okay, and then he says、uh, because when it's a sweaty hand. Rachel says, "Clammy hands." Now, this is a very interesting word. Clammy. Let's take a look. Clam itself in Korean is choge, right? Now, if you see that something is clammy, it means that it is wet and moist. So here we go. Check out the definition of clammy. Okay, so clammy basically is an adjective. As you say, the stress goes on the first syllable, clammy. It's cold and damp, covered with moist. Basically, sweaty hands. Okay, and then、uh, here's an example. If you say that somebody has clammy hands, you mean that person has wet and moist hands. Or even better, we'll be taking a look at it. You can call somebody clammy hands, meaning that person has sweaty hands, or it is a person with sweaty hands. Let's move on. So he says, if you have clammy hands or wet hands, moist hands, they are going to call you clammy hands. I did explain to you, clammy hands means a person with very wet or sweaty hands. So she just makes sure. Rachel says, all right. So a firm handshake is really important. It's crucial. It's key. And Peter says, then eye contact is important as well. Moving on, a big smile is important, and he says, "I think that always helps. It makes people feel much more comfortable." All right, and then moving on. Now, Rachel says that definitely will leave a great first impression. I'm sure you all may be aware of first impression in Korean. It's simply chadinzang, right? So there are very important things you should keep in mind to leave or give. A great first impression. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, to leave an impression, it can be a bad impression or a good impression. But to leave an impression means to give somebody an idea of what you are like. So to provide a lasting memory for someone. Okay, okay, let's move on. And then they say, as long as you don't have something stuck in your teeth. Basically, meaning,、uh, for example, you may have had something very spicy Korean food. You might have red pepper powder stuck between your teeth. So he's saying, make sure you don't have something stuck between your teeth. Moving on. Now she says, I'll have to get a mirror and check my teeth. That's for sure. Now, once again, she makes sure a firm handshake is important. Also, good eye contact is important. Now these show confidence. This all shows that I am confident, and a friendly smile will show that I am at ease. Now let's take a look at at ease, for example. Okay, here we go. Now to be at ease means to be without worry. You're feeling comfortable. You're feeling relaxed. So if I say I'm feeling at ease, it means I'm feeling easy. Relaxed and comfortable. Okay, and then moving on, she says, and that I'm comfortable with my surroundings. We took a look at this long time ago as well. Now, surroundings basically means your environment. Okay, your surrounding environment. Okay, so let's move on and check out what they say. Now, Peter says, sure. Then maybe the last thing, he says, remember, remember. People's names. This is very important when it comes to introducing yourself to people that you meet for the first time. Remembering people's names is very important. And then he says, and when you say your name as well, project it loudly. One more time. Now, in this case, we are not talking about project as in a noun, but it's used as a verb. So how should it be pronounced? Project. Project. Okay. Project your name loudly so that they can hear you and remember your name. Okay, and then moving on. 
But you know, there's so many people that I have to meet, she says. So she asks, how do I remember all their names? Okay. Now, Peter gives great advice once again, writing it down. Now, to write something down basically means to take notes, right? So let's take a look. To write something down means to make a note of something. You know, take a memo or a note of something so that you do not forget. Okay, moving on. Now, as soon as you can, at the earliest opportunity, okay? At the earliest opportunity, basically meaning ASAP, as soon as possible. And then he says, and I think you'll be fine, Rachel. So he hopes her the best. Now she says, you think so? All right. Well, I can't wait to use that advice on my first day at my new company. And then finally, what does Peter say? He says, fingers crossed. Now, uh, usually when we say fingers crossed, we may say, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. So let's take a look at fingers crossed. Now, to keep someone's fingers crossed, we often do this. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. And very simply, you can also say fingers crossed. It basically means that you are wishing the other person luck. So it means good luck to you. I'll keep my fingers crossed so that everything will work out well. Okay, that about brings us to an end to today's actual talk, everyone. We've got uh, Rachel saying thank you at the end of the conversation. So here we go. Take a listen to actual talk one more time with the subtitles. Hey, Peter. Hey, Rachel. How are you? I'm good, but I'm a bit nervous. <gasps> Why? Because I'm starting at a new company in a couple days, mm -hmm. but I don't really know how to introduce myself to a new group of people. I guess, yeah. The first day at a company is nerve-wracking. Yeah. Right? You meet so many new faces, and they all know each other as well. That's exactly. even worse. But there are some things that I could uh, say you should do on your first I'd day. I'd love some advice. Okay. A firm handshake. That's okay. key to project confidence, but not too hard. You don't want to hurt the other person, <laughs> but not too flimsy as well. I hate a wet flimsy handshake so if you're feeling nervous and sweaty perhaps give your hand a wipe as well oh beforehand. like a handkerchief in my pocket yeah, or something. yeah absolutely that's if you don't have that idea. just on the back of your skirt or trousers <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that's a great idea yeah because when it's a sweaty hand that you come to it's like, clammy uh, hands they're gonna call you clammy hands <laughs> that's at the company. true <laughs> all right so a firm handshake is really important yeah and then eye contact as well all of these things is to project your uh, confidence right, right. Uh, eye contact and a big smile i think that always helps it makes people feel much more comfortable if you're happy as well yeah, yeah. that's true that definitely will leave a great first impression your smile yeah right? yeah yes. as long as you don't have something stuck in your teeth oh no i'll again, have to check i will i'll have to get a mirror and check my teeth that's for sure yeah. all right so you're saying a firm handshake is important good eye contact mm -hmm. those show that i'm confident right yeah. and then a friendly smile will show that um, i'm at ease and i'm comfortable with my surroundings sure right? and then maybe the last thing remember people's names oh, and when right. you say your name as well project it loudly so they remember you that's true but you know there's so many people that i have to meet that how do i remember all their names i think writing it down as soon as you can the earliest okay. possible opportunity um but i think that's about it and i think you'll be fine rachel you think so yes all right well i can't wait to use that advice on my first day at my new company fingers crossed thank you <laughs> Now, was the dialogue a bit easier for you to understand? I really hope so. Now, quickly, let's go over the expressions that we learned in today's actual talk. This will show you or give you a better idea of how you can use these expressions, phrases, and vocabulary. So we took a look at the word nerve-wracking. Nerve-wracking, right? So what was the definition? Nerve-wracking is something that's very stressful and exhausting. So you can say, this week was a nerve-wracking week. Why? With tons of deadlines to meet. There was so much work to do. Wow, the week was nerve-wracking. All right, another one, project? No. In today's actual talk, we learn the verb form of project. So it's project project okay it means to give an image of something to clearly uh, give an impression of something right so you need to project your voice so that everyone can hear you in this case what does it mean now you need to project your voice basically means speak loudly so everyone can hear you okay project 
Say it out loud. Show it, for example. Another example is, I tried hard to project a positive image at the job interview. So you were also giving somebody a clear image or impression of something. You are projecting something. Let's take a look at to leave or make an impression on someone. Here's a sentence. She left a great impression on my parents. They instantly fell in love with her. Okay, you can leave or give an impression. Okay, let's check out another one. Keep one's fingers crossed or cross one's fingers for someone or something. Remember I said, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. So you can say, I hope you ace the exam, meaning I hope you get an A on the exam. I hope you do very well on the exam. And you can say, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. I'll be wishing you the best of luck, okay? So that about does it for today's actual talk expressions. Everyone, practice them and you need to understand what they mean and how they can be used in order to use them in your daily lives. Okay, we're now going to take you to our next segment. It's time for actual stories. So let's check out what Peter has to say. Here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Peter Liptak and I'm looking forward to working with all of you here at EBS. As a, uh, as a new employee, I'm hoping to meet each and every one of you individually and get to know you as well as get your feedback on what we can do to improve things here. Uh, as to my background, uh, I have a lot of experience in education and writing. Um, I've worked in education for about 20 years been a professor, uh, a private instructor, and also even a preschool teacher, so I'm fairly well-rounded in that experience. Uh, as a professional writer, I've been working uh, for many years with large conglomerates and some government or governmental organizations, as well as uh, publishing books. Uh, I publish ESL books, uh, children's books, and even books on Korea. Anyway, thank you all, and uh, please uh, come and talk to me when you have a chance. Now, to give you an idea of what actual story is, basically we'll have somebody for us each and every lesson to tell us their story about today's topic. So today we had Peter, Peter Liptak, and she, uh, he told us about himself. So it was kind of a self-introduction, perhaps at a workplace here at EVS, right? So let's take a look. Now, basically he was saying hello to people all of you out there and he's saying how happy he is to work here. He's also talked about his past work experiences. Now basically what I'm gonna do is focus on the expressions that he used, okay? So here we go, he introduces himself and he says I'm looking forward to working with all of you here at EBS. Now look forward to something basically means I'm excited to do something, I'm looking forward to it. And then he says, as a new employee, this is a wonderful way to talk about what you plan to do or what you hope to do. We'll be taking a look at this pattern later on and we'll practice it. So as a new employee, I'm hoping to so-and-so. So he says, I'm hoping to meet each and every one of you. He sounds very excited, right? And then he says, as well as get your feedback on what we could do to help you improve your English speaking skills. Moving on, now he talks about his background, meaning perhaps his past work experience. He says, as to my background, or you can also say, I think it's more commonly used with for. So as for my background, I have a lot of experience in so-and-so. We'll be taking a look at that pattern as well. So basically he's saying he has had a lot of experience in education and writing. And he talks about where he has worked in the past. I have worked in education for about how long? For 20 years. So he's been a professor, a private instructor. He's even been a preschool teacher teaching little kids. Now preschool, this is a school they go to before kindergarten school. So he says, I'm fairly well-rounded. 
When you say that somebody is well-rounded, especially if you want to say that there are many things that you know how to do, if you have knowledge in many different things, you can say that you are well-rounded, okay? Moving on, as a professional writer, I've been working for, so I have been, meaning he's continuing to work until this point, for many years with large conglomerates. Large conglomerates basically are very large businesses, large companies consisting of subsidiary companies and small divisions as well, so large companies, and even some governmental organizations, as well as publishing books. He talks about the books he's written, and he says, finally, anyway, thank you all, and he wraps up his story. So, what we're going to do is take a look at the expressions he used in uh, his actual story. Here we go. First of all, this is a great way to begin talking about how excited you are to work at the new company. I'm looking forward to, and then verb or verb ing form. So just remember this pattern. For example, you can say, I'm looking forward to showing you my capabilities. In other words, I am looking forward to showing you all the things I can do all the things I'm capable of doing. Another one, as a new employee, I hope to or I'm hoping to plus verb. Here's an example. As a new employee, I hope to be successful in my role. Moving on. You can also talk about your background. As for my background, I have experience in plus noun. Or another form, I have a lot of experience of doing something. Here we go. As for my background, I have experience of working abroad, okay? Or, as for my background, I have work experience in a certain field, such as teaching or even planning. So that about wraps it up for today's actual story. Now, I do stress one more time that you study these patterns, make them yours, become familiar with them, and perhaps try to use them as many times as possible in the future. All right, I guess that wraps it up for today's actual story. Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Liptak, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you here at EBS. As a, uh, as a new employee, I'm hoping to meet each and every one of you individually and get to know you, as well as get your feedback on what we can do to improve things here. Uh, as to my background, uh, I have a lot of experience in education and writing. Um, I've worked in education for about 20 years, been a professor, uh, a private instructor, and also even a preschool teacher, so I'm fairly well-rounded in that experience. Uh, as a professional writer, I've been working uh, for many years with large conglomerates and some government or governmental organizations, as well as uh, publishing books. Uh, I publish ESL books, uh, children's books, and even books on Korea. Anyway, thank you all, and uh, please uh, come and talk to me when you have a chance. Everyone, this brings us to an end to today's lesson. I hope you had a wonderful time with me. I hope it wasn't too much. Now, the point is not to necessarily remember everything and memorize everything that we go over. Now, summarize the actual talk and summarize the actual story and just pay attention to a few important expressions and patterns and practice them on your own. I hope to see you again next time. I'll be joining you with a very similar topic, another self-introduction. I guess you can call it part two. We'll be talking about how you can introduce yourself in a very casual setting. So imagine that you're socializing with new people. Okay, everyone. Well, that about does it for today. You can always come to our homepage at www.ebse.co.kr. Check out our homepage and also we'll have the scripts up there for you. So make use of them as well. Until next time, take care and bye for now.